Happy Easter, everyone! Welcome to a pop-up Easter Live. I'm your host, Alex Cardinelli. And boy, oh boy, do I have a fun live stream coming your way this evening. Aqua Alex Cardinelli is going to be here. And Aqua Alex is going to have some featured fish. Aqua Alex is going to talk about the fox face rabbit fish and also the jewel cichlid. Aqua Alex for Oasis Aquatics will talk about the tiger moray eel. And for Aquascape Online, we will talk about the Hippolys wolffish because yesterday we couldn't go live because I was busy. So today we're going to transfer our some of our segments from yesterday's show to our show today. And Aqua Alex will discuss all those fish species here on this live stream. So I hope you guys have had an amazing Easter so far. And I hope you guys are ready for a fun live stream. So this is going to be something that I do a lot frequently now. I'm going to be doing a lot of uh, Sunday live stream pop-ups like this one, especially on holidays because I like to celebrate holidays on my YouTube. YouTube channel as often as I can. So on top of talking about fish, I'm going to answer any of your questions. So if you have any questions that you want me to answer, please feel free to post them in the comments and I will answer all your questions. And if you want to, you can come up and chat with us here on the live. There is a link in the YouTube section of our chat. You would just click that link. And the link looks something like this. It's a StreamYard link. So you would just click that, enter your name. And if you want to, you can actually broadcast uh, from my studio to your own platform, whether it be Facebook or YouTube. There is a, a way you can do that. I have enabled that for you as well. So you should be able to do that starting with this broadcast here. So we have all that planned for today's show, and we may have a special guest joining us. Um, I've invited a few people to come on up if they have free time, so we shall see. So with that being said, with that huge warm welcome, let's go ahead and get started. Let's see, I have a, a comment already here. Matt is watching us. Matt says, Happy Easter. Where's my cake? LOL. I wish I was close to you. I'd bring you a piece of cake so you could enjoy cake on uh, Easter Sunday. I wish I was close to you. I'd bring you some of the delicious cake that I just made. So uh, before I went live, I actually had dessert. And one of the desserts that I had was my strawberry cheesecake and the cannoli cookie that I made. All right. So... The best way to start this live stream is very simple. And the best way to start this live stream is to wish all of you 
a happy Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. I hope you have a great Easter, and I hope you're having a great Easter so far. My Easter has been pretty well. Today, I did a lot of cooking for Easter dinner, and I watched some baseball. I got to see my New York Yankees win, so that's always a plus on Easter. And now I'm doing my Easter live stream, so I had an amazing Easter. But I would like to wish everyone watching this video a happy and healthy Easter. I hope you guys all had an amazing Easter. Let's not forget the true meaning of Easter. The true meaning of Easter is we get to uh, forget about our sins because of Jesus Christ and what he went through. That's the true meaning of Easter. I know a lot of people don't celebrate Easter anymore. I still do. But anyway, happy Easter, everyone. I hope you had an amazing day and are having an amazing evening so far. Now, as I said a few moments ago, my New York Yankees got a victory today. And for the first time in a while, the Yankees have started their regular season 4-0. and that is incredible. I am extremely happy for my New York Yankees. We were able to sweep the Houston Astros. And if you guys have followed my YouTube channel for some time, you'll know that the Astros are one of the major league sports teams that I absolutely loathe and despise. I'm not a huge fan of the Astros. So seeing the Yankees whip the Astros ass four games in a row and beat them four games in a row to start the season was awesome. I like the way the season is looking for the Yankees, the way we are playing. I think it could be that the Yankees will be World Series champions again for the 28th time in history. So we shall see how that plays out for the New York Yankees. But I'm just glad the Yankees started the season with a sweep over the Houston Astros. And Matt says, coloring Easter eggs is a custom. Eggs were formerly a forbidden food during Lent. So people would paint and decorate them to mark the end of the period of penance and fasting. That is very true. Um, for many years, I actually participated in Lent, and Lent is very, very uh, big in Italian households. So for many years of my life, I participated in Lent. And in Lent, eggs as well as meat are generally uh, forbidden during the time of Lent. But I stopped doing Lent a couple years ago for personal reasons, but I still believe in it. Um, but I don't think you'll ever get me to stop eating chicken and, and meats again. <laughs> but Lent is very important when it comes to this time of year. Very, very cool. Glad you brought that up, Matt. That is a very important fact. All right. So there is something else I wanted to mention before I forgot, because sometimes when I go on live streams, I have so much things to cover, and I sometimes forget what I am uh, supposed to mention, but this is a birthday shout out for one of my personal friends. He is a longtime friend of mine and a longtime viewer of my YouTube channel. So I would like to say happy birthday to my dear friend, Jeremy Stellhorn. I have known Jeremy for as long as I've been on YouTube and then some. Jeremy has been an amazing asset of mine. Um, anytime I need any help with anything, I can go to Jeremy and ask him his opinion. I could also go to Jeremy to vent about things because, as you know, 30-year-olds have a lot to vent about. So I can go to Jeremy and vent to him about some things that are going on. So I just wanted to say before I forgot, happy birthday to my friend Jeremy. His birthday was actually on Good Friday this year. So a good man had a birthday on a Good Friday. So Happy birthday, Jeremy. I figured I would uh, give you a birthday shout out, even though I've already said happy birthday to you like a thousand times before. But since you support my YouTube channel and I know you'll be seeing this, I figured I'd give you a shout out on the air before I out because there's a lot of things that I'm going to talk 
talk about on this screen here because we weren't able to do a show last night. So we're going to cover everything that I missed last night on tonight's live stream. All right. So happy birthday, Jeremy. My friend Matt says in the chat, happy birthday, Jeremy. <laughs> and Matt's teasing me again. He says, you forgot. No, nah, never. It's probably just the allergies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it could be the allergies. Even the fish like the allergy. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So right now we're going to get to our first topic. Can you guys believe that today is the last day of March already? March has quickly come and March has quickly gone. Time has definitely flown by when it comes to this month. Um, March actually for, for me was a great month because earlier this month I celebrated my 10th year here on YouTube. It was an incredible two nights of action. So if you haven't seen my 10 year YouTube anniversary yet, I definitely recommend checking it out. It's on my YouTube channel, The Real Alex Cardinelli. Night one was very successful. Um, rapper Ryan Serene has uh, some incredible music and I was very fortunate to play it on night one. And also I was very fortunate to interview rapper Ryan Serene on night one. He is forever thankful for that. Uh, night two was incredible as well. Night two, I got to interview my personal friend and my business mentor and my um, supporter and partner for Aquatic Wetline, Tom McGuire from Oasis Aquatics. That was incredible. And that actually turned out to be the first of many interviews because starting this Tuesday, every month, Tom and I, the live stream right here on YouTube called Find Your Oasis. And that live stream was the result of you, my audience, because over this entire month, I had about 25, maybe more messages from people saying that they enjoyed the interview that I did with Tom. So I relayed all your messages and your kind words to Tom, and we agreed that the best thing to move forward would be to do another live stream, except this time it would be a more permanent live stream, and it will air once a month on Tuesdays. So that starts this coming Tuesday right here on my YouTube channel at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, and the name of the show is going to be Find Your Oasis. It'll be similar to this show in the fact that it'll be unscripted and it'll just be two fish guys talking about tropical fish and whatever else is on our mind. And of course, what's going on in the world of Oasis Aquatics in Hackettstown, New Jersey. So basically what I'm telling you is basically this is Tom's show and my show too, but mo mostly the feature is going to be on Tom and what's going on at Oasis Aquatics. And I'll just be there to ask questions and interact with the live viewers. So that's going to be incredible, but I'm not going to put a lot of pressure on Tom just yet. I haven't told him yet that this is actually going to be part of his show, um, but it is going to be eventually it'll be his show and I'll just be there to answer questions and ask questions. So that's going to be really, really fun. So that happened in March this year. We had our 10-year YouTube anniversary, and that's about it for me personally because nothing else major happened, except I got a couple of new fish this month. I got my true parrot cichlid, my orange singu pike cichlid, uh, my NTT datnoid, and what else did I get? And two lima chevinos, and that's it. So I don't know if I'll be getting any more new fish this month or next. Uh, but definitely I'll be getting some more new fish for my birthday in, in about five months. So right now I, I like the way my 125 is stocked. But like I said, having said that, I do have some fish that I want to add to my 125, which would include some Red Hook Silver Dollars, some more Datnoids, uh, and, and other fish. So we but anyway, that is the March 2024 recap. Let's see. We have a lot of comments to get to here. All right. Let's see. 
Matt says you can do Find Your Oasis live in our group. We love Tom as well. Awesome. Yes, Find Your Oasis will broadcast live on Facebook Fish Group Aquarium Obsession as well. And uh, Matt also says April will be a great month because you officially start year 11. And that is true. Very, very true. And Matt, I don't wonder. And Matt also says Tom will need. We'll need to do a weekly new fishing stock because they got so much new stuff in there. I keep looking at back at their page, and it's amazing what they keep getting in. Yeah, he gets in some incredible fish. Like right now, he has some gorgeous super red severums and also a beautiful African starfish. That's very, very cool. And did you mention your pike? Yes, I did. My orange zingu pike cichlid. Very, very cool fish. I love the orange and goo pikes. Very, very cool. And there's actually a care guide that I did I did yesterday on our group, Aquarium Obsession. So if any fish keepers is on Facebook, go check out our Facebook group, Aquarium Obsession, and you will see my species care guide I did on the uh, orange and goo pike cichlid. All right, so right now it's time for our first featured fish of the evening. And this is a perfect featured fish because today is Easter. And what is Easter all about? Well, Easter is all about rabbits and bunnies. That's what America wants you to think about. But honestly, Easter is about God. But anyway, the American Easter is about bunnies and rabbits. So... Our featured fish for this week is going to be the fox face rabbit fish, a beautiful saltwater fish that comes to us from Fiji, Hawaii, and many other areas of the world and many oceans of the world. There are a couple of types of fox face out there. You've got your regular fox face low which is basically a plain low black and white fox face. Then there is my personal favorite fox face, which is the one that's pictured on the screen. That is basically a one spot fox face. It's a fox face low with a blotch spot. Then there is the bicolor fox face, which is a fox face that is black with yellow and white coloration. It looks totally different than a regular and one spot fox face. And then there is a magnificent fox face or silver fox face that is silver, red, white, and black. All fox faces are very beautiful, and they all get about 8 to 12 inches in length. So they're perfect for 75-gallon, uh, 90-gallon, and larger. They are allergy eaters, but they are very hardy in the aquarium hobby. And they can adjust to a more carnivorous diet as well. My fox faces loved eating raw market shrimp as well as nori and other marine foods that I fed my saltwater fish. So the fox face is one of my featured fish this evening. And of course, I've got a video showing you uh, how beautiful the fox face is. The video I'm going to show you is of a one-spot fox. Check it out. One fish. One week in a world filled with thousands of different fish species. Which fish makes the cut? It's fish of the week. All right, so here is that video of the beautiful fox rabbit fish.
All right, and that is the beautiful fox face rabbit fish, a very cool uh, majestical creature that I really love. It's one of my favorite saltwater fish. And you know, to me, the fox face is very similar to the datnoid. I think the datnoid is the copycat version for freshwater of the fox face. So that is awesome. All right, there is something else that I wanted to, I want to mention before I forget, and it's a big round of applause for my friend, owner of Oasis Aquatics, my friend Tom McGuire. Aquatics will be celebrating. They will be celebrating one year of being open. So tomorrow, April first, is their one year anniversary. And Oasis Aquatics is going to be having a one-year anniversary sale. So let me pull up the banner that I actually made for them. And I'll put it on the screen for you so I can explain it better and also show you better. So let me turn off the uh, on-screen ticker for now so I can show the full banner. There we go. So Oasis Aquatics is having a one-year anniversary sale. The sale will start on um, Thursday, April 4th, and the sale will conclude on Sunday, April 7th. It is only for locals, though. So unfortunately, unlike the sale that we had for our 10-year YouTube anniversary, this one is only for people in Hackettstown, New Jersey, or from New Jersey. It's only in-store, but it's still a pretty big sale. Um, so the sale details, you will get 10% off purchases up to $199. You will get 15% off purchases from $200 to $299. And you will get 20% off purchases over the fourth. And it will conclude on April 7th. It's going to celebrate the one year anniversary of Oasis Aquatics which was opened on April 1st of 2023 last year. So congratulations, Tom. It's been an incredible year for you. I am incredibly proud of everything you have done in one year. That is incredibly awesome. And I can't wait to talk about it on Tuesday on the debut of Find Your Oasis. Like I said, because someone is asking me in the chat, is this sale available for online? Unfortunately, I don't think it's available for online. At the moment um i think this is a in store for locals in new jersey but having said that there could be a possibility that it could be in the future available for online shoppers i know that we did an online sale for my 10-year youtube anniversary and uh, i i know that it's not out of the question that we can do another online sale in the future but for now i know that it's just for local new jersey residents and those that are from Hackettstown, New Jersey. All right. So I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that before I forgot that as well. All right. Let's see. All right. There we go. You can see the difference in the ages in your video. The larger ones have the brighter yellow cord color that they get when they reach sexual maturity. The younger ones have kind of a grayish tan. They're kind of muted yellow. A million years ago, my father used to have these, or at least it seems like that long. That's very cool. Fox faces are very, very cool. And Matt also says it's two weeks today since being revived after my third stroke. Very thankful to all my family and friends for all their prayers and support. Learning to walk again is hard, but I can do it. Got to walk to maintain aquariums. That is true, but I, I definitely believe that you can do it. If anyone can do it, you can do it. I know you love the aquarium hobby so much, so I think you can do it. All right, so what's next here on the agenda? Again, if you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comments, and I will be happy to answer your questions. Also, in the comments here on YouTube, I have a link to my stream yard, so if anyone wants to come on up and chat tropical fish or chat about anything, 
just click this link here in the YouTube chat, and you can come on up on our live stream and have a lot of fun with us. So that would be very cool. I usually don't get many people that pop up on the screen. Occasionally, sometimes I do, but I think the last time I had someone pop up on a live stream was maybe three or four weeks ago. So, and that was a lot of fun. So I always do appreciate you come up on a live stream and have a lot of fun. All right, right now we're going to get to our Oasis Aquatics featured fish. And this week's Oasis Aquatics featured fish is actually a true freshwater moray eel. Yes, that's right. There is true freshwater moray eels, and we're going to learn about them right now. <laughs> So my name is Tom. I started fish keeping when my grandfather dug a fish tank out of the attic when I was about five years old. So my name's Matt. I'm part of uh, Oasis Aquatics. Been doing this for a long time. Started when I was about seven years old. 22 years of doing this business. I'm 29 years old now. I never stopped. There wasn't a day in between where I did not think about fish, fish keeping. I was doing a vet tech job for many years. Eventually I stopped that because this is my passion in my life. Matt and I have known each other Far too long, as many friendships should be. And you're like, you know what? We need a fish store. There's no fish stores around here. So we have to make it easy access for everyone, to have many varieties from the little small stuff for everyone to the monster fish keeper people. No matter what it is that you're looking to do, we can provide it for you. All right, so this week's featured fish for Oasis Aquatics is the tiger moray eel. And the tiger moray eel is a true freshwater moray. It is a very cool true freshwater moray eel as well. Now, personally, I have never kept one, but they're definitely on my list of fish that I want to keep. They're on my list of cool, unique, exotic fish that I have to at least keep at least once. You know, I love the moray eels when I had salt water. I did keep um, moray eels when I had salt water. So they were very, very fun. So the true moray eel from Oasis Aquatics is available right now. It's the tiger moray eel. But let's see. Uh, let's see here. Okay, cool. We actually have someone that's on our show right now that I would like to welcome. I've been wanting to have him on my show for a little while. He's actually a fellow YouTuber and a good friend of mine. So would you guys please give it up for my friend Gordon from Aquarium Talk TV. Gordon, happy Easter. How are you, buddy? Good. How are you, man? Can you hear me? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, yeah. man, a hundred percent. I uh, I can't see you. Sorry, I can't see me, but I can see you. That's weird. Let me refresh the page. There we go. Now, now I only see me though. Do you have an option for uh, to put like it the uh, for both of us on there or hello? Well, um, I can't see anything right now. Not sure how the StreamYard thing works. I signed up for it. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Kind of foggy in my brain. Um, the StreamYard thing is pretty simple. Um, you just uh, you drop the link in, and you're you're kind of good to go that way. So um... <laughs> yeah, there's Alex. He's back, but uh, I'm gone now. <laughs> but that's uh, weird. I don't know what's going on here. Yeah, so oh, wait, basically I now I see him, I see Gordon. I think I've watched him before and he looks and sounds familiar. Um Yeah, you, you know, you may have watched me before. I'm on uh YouTube. I do have an Instagram and a YouTube channel. Um and um 
it is called Aquarium Talk TV. Um, I also have collaborated with other YouTubers. You may have seen me in uh, their videos as well. Um, maybe. I, I truly don't know, though. But if you've seen me before, that's a good thing. It means you may have watched something. That's um, cool. I can't tell if you're, if you're on the live stream or not. I can't see you. No, I'm here. not. I don't know why that is. Yeah. Um, so I think it's maybe interface. because the temp, yeah. the the interface you have in the back or something like that. But um, Alex, where did you yeah. go? Gordon just took over your live stream. Go ahead, Gordon. Answer the comments. LOL. Happy Easter, brother. Happy Easter <laughs> to you, Brian. 100%, man. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, no, I'm just, uh, happy. I mean, I've been meaning to come on one of Alex's, uh, live streams for a while now. My life is, uh, pretty hectic having two children at home, um, and working full time along with the aquarium hobby itself and family and, uh, you know, the, 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 the day, there we go. Now we're both in, um, the, the daily struggles of life. So, um, <laughs> you know, I've just been trying to figure out a time to, come on and unfortunately for me it is a little bit sporadic and last minute planning ahead always seems to never work out for me so uh you know when people tell me they're going live at this time and whatever I, i'll do my best to try to join and have some fun and support aquarium obsession that's awesome i really appreciate that yeah aquarium obsession i may have seen you before obsession man from aquarium it's a facebook group oh, okay i'm i'm not on a facebook group i do see an aquarium obsession uh youtube page here that if that's you matt um it very well could be um but it may or may not be so i sub to the channel regardless just to um <laughs> that's awesome. make you, who knows who that is but um yeah so what's going on alex happy easter my man Happy Easter. How was your Easter? Mine was pretty good. Pretty basic, yep. though. Yeah, I just my cooked Easter. All days. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. So, are you? Yeah. What, what do you do? What do you do? Do you cook for a living? Yeah, I used to be a chef. Oh wow! So you can cook. Yeah. See me, I can't it's... cook. Um, for, see me, I can't cook. I can barbecue. I can cook meat. Um, that is about it. That's okay. I'm sure you could cook good if I taught you. Yeah, you know, I definitely, you know, my wife, my wife's a great cook, so she tries to teach me. Um, but, uh, you know, I get frustrated and just try to do it my way. You know how men are. Um, we think we know it all. <laughs> but, yeah, That's no, true. man. Um, so, uh, hey, Alex. Hey, Alex. Uh, sorry. Hey, Mike. How are you? Um yeah, so for everybody tuning in, happy Easter. I hope you had a great time. Um, you know, you, maybe you had some food. Maybe you didn't. Maybe you went out and did something today. Maybe you did some tank maintenance. Uh, maybe you kept it low-key. Maybe you did a lot. Um, happy Easter to everybody in the, that's going to watch this video maybe afterwards or um, is watching the, the live stream now. I just wanted to uh, give you my condolences on the loss of your peacock bass. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, you know, man, it sucks, dude. It it happens. Um, there's not much you can really do about it. You know, well, sometimes you can. Um, sometimes you can't. And in this case, um, well, when you're dealing with large fish, like, I don't know if anyone can see the, they're all kind of on that corner right now, but um, the arowana's over there. I have a couple stingrays, a uh, big bicer, and, uh, well, two bass and an Oscar left, but I did have three bass, and uh, the one was a big Temensis, and uh, he unfortunately bit the dust, got scrapping with my big male Azul, and um, just tank boss, typical stuff with monster fish and peacock bass in general. If you've had them, you'll know what I'm talking about. And um, damage happened, hurt a swim bladder, and tried even as going as far as um doing the surgery it just wasn't successful and and um you know he passed away but i tried every other method before this uh the swim bladder surgery i did try every single method prior to that surgery um because i always like to think you know if you're going to do surgery on a fish um it needs to be life or death um do or die um, because when you're going, when you do the swim bladder surgery, the, the chances of infection afterwards and death are so extremely high. 
Um, it's, it's, you know, it's, a, it's basically like a, his 60% chance that there could be an internal infection afterwards. And of course you can keep treating and treating and treating, but still it's always never a guarantee to work. Um, and I personally don't like go dealing with medication, uh, up unless I absolutely have to, I think in the aquarium hobby, like we're really quick to run to medication and just go and, Oh, something is wrong. I better go grab, um, uh, Maricin or Enthromycin or Prazi Pro. Well, Prazi Pro is not bad. That's kind of like a general treatment. I wouldn't say that one, but you know, um, Canison and like all the other, all these other different medications and just start dosing our fish. Um, and I think that natural methods we should always try first. Um, but unfortunately, again, even with medication, it just it didn't work out. So I actually agree with you. I don't think I have any medicine on hand, but when I do, I usually have Prozzi Pro and Melifix, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. Well, Melifix, especially when you got a, if you got cichlids, you need Melifix around. Um, but um, when I used to have piranhas, I would constantly dose um, Melifix because they just, you know, when you're feeding them, they typically bite each other and just trying to get the food. They're not aggressive necessarily towards each other. It's just um, when they're juveniles, they are, they're cannibals. But uh, when they're adults, they're not necessarily aggressive towards each other. They're just more aggressive trying to grab that big piece of food. And sometimes a bite misses and they get clipped. And so you're constantly healing up piranha. Um but yeah, no, typically what I have in my home at all times is I do try to have medication on hand at all times, even though I don't like to use it, um, simply for the fact that I'm in Canada and um, fish meds are banned here. Uh, we cannot get fish medication wow. here. So we've quickly learned to adapt with a lot of things in, like salt, rock salt in particular, you know, um, aquarium salt or whatever people want to call it. Um which is just rock salt. Um, your people like we've gotten pretty clever at treating a lot of fish diseases and illnesses with, with salt and whether it's raising temp or lowering temp, um, a lot of different things. So I would just say, um, you know, we've gotten clever. So anytime I do cross the border and I go to the U S I'll go grab a bunch of medication just to stock up. Right. And just to make sure that I have what I need in a, God forbid situation where I actually need it. I have it on hand um, because the border I live in uh, Niagara, Niagara, Ontario. So basically downtown Buffalo is about 15 minutes away from my house. Yeah, it's about 15 minutes away from my house. Sorry, I just want to no. hear what that noise was. It's my stingray dancing along the glass. <laughs> I love stingrays. They're so cool. Yeah, can can Canadians are homey. <laughs> homeopathic fish healers <laughs> yeah dude we have to be we have to be um we kind of have no other option and when the fish meds are available in canada what will happen is as a guy like me for example i don't do this i just think it's downright dirty um but but people will go buy fish medication across the border and they'll sell it privately here and they'll charge you know hold on So for a bottle of uh, Prazi Pro, this, um, I don't know what this is at a fish store, maybe 20 bucks, something like that, 15, 20 bucks. I don't know. Here, this is $100. People wow. will charge $100 for 16 ounces, 473 milliliter bottle of Prazi Pro, $100. So they'd mark it up knowing that people can't get it and they need it. And that's what happens. Um, that's just downright dirty, but... I don't play like that. So it, typically anybody in the area, if they ever need fish meds or whatever, and they can't make it um, across the border right away, um, they know to just give me a shout. And I always do my best to try to help them out. But Can you guys order meds online, like through Amazon? Uh, some, some you can, but it's not an overnight prime thing. Some do make it across. Um, a lot of Canadian fish keepers, what they'll do is they'll order it on eBay. And uh, private sellers and stuff in the U.S. They'll 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 ship it across the border. I have a lot of friends in the U.S. too, so they just ship me they, privately. You can ship um, fish meds though. And the best part is, here's the best part: I can cross the border, 
for an hour, go over to Buffalo, go to a fish store, maybe buy some fish. I can legally bring fish back. Okay. And I can get meds and bring them back across the border. No problem at all. What did you buy? Fish medication and fish. Okay. What medication did you buy? There's no questions like that. What'd you buy? Fish medication and fish and gas and groceries. Cool. Have a great day. So we have, um, we have, we're very regulated in terms of our food. Um, a lot of the things that we have here, for example, our McDonald's is a lot different than your McDonald's. It's the same food, essentially same meals, Big Macs, you know, all that other stuff, but it's better quality. And that's not knocking anything. It's just, we have this, what's called the CFIA and uh, Canadian food, something, something, they're in charge of all importation of fish, animals, um, food, food, anything. And they have a regulate, like they have, they're a regulator to make sure that the quality meets the standard in order to come into Canada. That's why a lot of fish food companies can't come into Canada because Canada doesn't allow it based off of the, the maybe some of the foods that are in that fish food. Um, so I know a lot, a lot of fish food companies want to come into Canada. Unfortunately, they just don't want to go through the work to, to change their, their recipes up a little bit, you know, because, but there's a lot of great ones, you know, North Bend's a Canadian company, um, started in Canada. The owner's name's Darius. Um, great guy. Um, ultra fresh is a company that I work very closely with, which is an incredible company. Um, you know, they're all good uh, essentially. Um, you know, I just don't like a fish food that makes my water cloudy, but anyway, sorry, I just got carried away. Everyone, my apologies. Um, let's get back no, to the good. comments. Prazzy pro for quarantine. Anything I get wild caught or catch myself. No other meds. Salt is a yes. Canadians are homeopathic. Yeah. I already read that. Um, hold on here. That's exactly why I have several Canadian fish keepers on the administration team of our group because of the challenges the Canadian members get in treating their fish. Hell yes. Hell Yes. Um, I, so Brian, um, uh, what's the Facebook group called? I'll join it. I don't join Facebook groups, but I will join your group because it seems heavily modded. Um, dude, if I've seen some, I've been in some aquarium groups before and they're aggressive on Facebook. Like I'm here. I've seen, oh, absolutely. I never really, dude, I never took part of them ever, but I would read the comments of people and they would be like, you know, Hey, um, just bought this tank, um, for my son for his birthday, you know, um, he's really been wanting to get into fish. So we got him a beta, um, just set it up, got it from Petco or PetSmart, you know, any tips or tricks. And then immediately, cause these people go to, br not, they're not going to brick and mortar LFSs. They're going to big chain stores that have somebody in part-time in, in high school that doesn't know a thing about fish selling them all this stuff. And, uh, they come home, they're actually looking for real answers. And they're like, how dare you buy that without the tank cycle? <laughs> Did you not know? Are you stupid? And like, oh, dude, I was watching this poor mother get roasted. And our job as fish keepers is to keep people in the hobby or bring more people into the hobby, not push people away from it. So I did pipe up and it was to the point where it's like, you know, dude, like where are the mods here? Like, like shut this down like yeah anyways that was my experience with uh fish groups on facebook but i will join yours brian uh hold on here uh 14.99 i just bought some month ago see right there markup i just have canadian friends that get meds off of aquabit as well good smart smart choice i've heard of aquabit as well uh the other thing is there's different rules for different parts of canada because i have fish keepers all over the place and some can get stuff in their areas and others can't where they live like my friend in my my home, my home bay can't get any type of fish medicines or even stuff to treat water. Local stores quit carrying all of it. I was in Canada in 2015. I went up to Michigan to see family and went over to Canada to see where my family came from, which is the Toronto area. Okay, so that's where I'm from, brother, the Toronto area. Uh, the family originally started. Oh, nice, man. So you're Canadian. Technically. Um, no apologies, Gordon. That was a great back and forth. That Alex is wonderful. I do it all the time in the comments every live stream. I took the six biggest countries and we have two admins from each one. Brian is actually Matt. Okay. Aquarium obsession, hobbyist. Gotcha. Aquarium obsession, hobbyist is my backup Facebook, LOL, but the group is actually called aquarium obsession. 
We've been around since 2018 and dodge the Facebook standards bullet daily. Nice. I'm banned from my local Petco. <laughs> Me too. No, I'm not banned. I want to be though. <laughs> A lot um, of people are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, so I think I'm, ba so the reason why I said I, me too is because I think I am banned from one and it's not for how they treat fish or anything like that. It was because I watched a guy give a person wrong advice on how to deal with algae. And I, so I did calmly pipe up and I was like, Hey man, you know, another thing that worked for me was, and I wasn't trying to like steal the thunder from the pet smart employee. Uh, we don't have Petco's here. We have pet smarts. Um, I wasn't trying to steal the thunder from the pet smart employee. What I was trying to do was, um, just offer my opinion, I guess you could say, and just be like, Oh, you know, that's a great like, I thing. What you said. Meanwhile, it was complete BS, but I was like, however, here's what I strongly recommend you do as a hobbyist. Um, Blah, 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 blah. You don't need this. You don't need that. That's not going to do anything. What's your filtration like? How many water changes are you doing? TDS is a big factor in terms of building up on algae and nitrates, right? So, you know, you know, so, and then he's like, oh, what's TDS? Total dissolved solids. Then I broke it down to him that way. And I was like, how much are you feeding? Are you overfeeding? So we brought it down that way. And, um, Truth be told, he just didn't have enough filtration in his tank and uh, he didn't have enough flow, period, um, in his aquarium. And he was overfeeding and he wasn't doing enough water changes. So I showed him an API master test kit. He walked out spending 200 bucks and uh, I gave the guy uh, my number. This is before I was on YouTube or anything like that. So I gave the guy my number. I'm like, hey, man, like, if you ever have an issue, let me know. Well, the guy, as I was leaving the store, the manager approached me when I was leaving the store, me and my son were going in to look at cats up for adoption. Cause we were looking for cats. Typically I won't walk in there. And, um, and, uh, I had seen that happen. So I was paying for the stuff and she's like, Oh, you know, we do appreciate it. And she's like, you know, so, um, where are you from? And she was explaining, basically explained to me that they didn't really appreciate it, that they're trained on, on fish and, um, to give the right expertise and what if this person goes home and fails and um, they're going to come back and blame it on our store. And I was like, oh, well, actually, your employee was giving the wrong information, complete <laughs> wrong information. So then she said, well, how many pet smarts are between you and here? And I without this was in St. Catharines. I live in Welland, Ontario. So I was like, two. And she's like, OK, so there you have closer ones to you. And I was like, yes. And then she's like, OK, have a good day. That's all she said. So, wow, that's messed up. Mm -hmm. I would have yeah. made you an employee yeah. if I was the manager. Yeah, I did think of, I don't want to be an employee at a, at a, um, <laughs> at, a pet, at a, at a pet co or a pet smart. I do. No, you, you know what, dude? I, I think, dude. Oh, shoot. I got to add that aquarium obsession. So, here's one of the things with me, everybody. I have ADD. Um, ADHD to be exact, which is why I like fish tanks because they calm me down. Aquarium obsession. What's the group called? Aquarium obsession. Hold on. Hobbyist. Ah. Hobbyist. Uh, wait. Aquarium obsession. Oh, shoot. Is this the group? Yes, that's it. Okay. Join group. Oh, I got to answer questions. Got to answer those questions. How did you hear about the group? From a friend. Would you agree? Yes. How long have you kept fish? Never. <laughs> uh, I agree to group rules. Probably no, I put, I, 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 I'm accurate. I'm accurate. Zero sales allowed. No problem. <laughs> okay. Um, hold on here. Man, I get carried away, Alex. You got to tell me tell me to no, you're shut good. up. Um, no, you're good. Their quote aquatics manager. guess you can see whatever you want. Their, their quote aquatics manager was trying to sell a lady to two Oscars with a 29-gallon tank and telling her they could be housed for life. And I stepped in and told her she was crazy and pulled up all the pictures and showed her 
the Oscars I had for 15 years. They got 14 inches long. First, she said they were photoshopped, so I pulled out over 100 pictures and videos, and she says, I had no idea they got that big, and I got kicked out because I told her she shouldn't be selling fish to anyone. <laughs> oh, I'm banned. The fish manager called the cops. She said I was making her look bad, causing quite a loss of revenue. Oh, no. Wow. The creator told me about the group. Um, Gordon, that's a lie. I see fish behind you. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, I like to troll a little bit. I'm a big troller. So never take me seriously. Ever. Like, ever. So, um, no, talking to you, guy. Alex. So what do you, what do you have? Uh, what do you have for aquariums, my friend? Right now, I just have my, uh, my 125 because I gave my 75 to my dad. He kept, he keeps fish too. Nice. I was born in the hospital because he was keeping Same. fish. Same. So he has a red devil. He has a red devil right now. A red devil. Okay. 70. That's a good one. Yeah. 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 See that, that red devil aggressive? For... Yeah, definitely. He has to eat by himself. Yeah. I yeah, like red that'll... devils, but I can't do single, single fish tanks. Yeah. Yeah. That'll, that'll, that'll do it. Hey. Um, yeah, man. Um, you know, it, it, it is what it is, dude. Um, I, I was born into the hobby as well. My dad kept uh, primarily goldfish. Um, I got my first tropical fish with, um, uh, I got my first tropical fish with him. My first real tropical fish. I had goldfish too. Um, and a turtle. Um, but I got, um, piranhas. They were my first real tropical fish. Nice. Mm -hmm. Red belly awesome. piranhas. Yeah. I got two of them. It's funny. I had, I got two of them and, um, they were tall. They were tiny, man. The size of like a dime. Do you guys know what, do you guys have dimes there? Yeah. 10 cent coins, right? We have them. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. I, almost like, similar. Wait a second similar. here. Yeah, yeah, similar coins. Yeah, you're just our we our doll our one dollars. They're no longer. We used to have them as bills, but they're now loonies. Uh, they're called loonies. They're a coin, and then our two dollars. We used to have a two dollar bill, and that got taken away, and now that's called a toonie, which is a two dollar coin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, toonie Tuesdays. I'm telling you, man. KFC toonie Tuesdays. Um, but yeah, man, it's um. So I I kind of was born in the hobby as well, and kind of found my way through that but you know the big the big thing is is um i just um i like i do like the fact of i like fit meeting other fish keepers that come into the hobby like and they're both kind of born into it you know what i mean i i think that that that's an awesome thing and it doesn't take any credibility away from anybody it just means like like man like you're naturally that's in your blood you know what i mean like you know what you're doing like my i have a cousin of mine his dad was in the hobby with my dad um so both brothers and uh they were both in the hobby whereas my cousin will never keep fish um it's not that he doesn't like them he understands the, the work that's involved with keeping them and he understands the cost um as well the startup costs i guess you could say and the you know if you only have one or two tanks and they're small tanks it's not going to change your bills pretty much at all other than some upfront cost and a little bit of elbow grease um but when you're getting into big tanks like some of the tanks that i have and stuff like that it it definitely starts to, to hit your utility bills and your water bill if you're on municipal and all that other stuff but he won't keep fish but the best part is he can educate anybody on the nitrogen cycle he can tell you how to treat flukes. That's good. He can, yeah, but he, but he's never kept a fish himself, ever, because of his old man. Yeah, so it's kind of the opposite, you know. Whereas I went, you know, throughout my entire life with going to school and stuff like that, being young, having girlfriends, going out, partying at nineteen years old. You know what I mean? Just being young. I'm thirty five now, and um, you know. Fish keeping kind of becomes something I don't want to do. You know, at, at certain point in times of my life, I've walked away from the hobby, but I've kind of always found my way back. That's 
That's cool. You're only five years older than me. Yeah, there you go, you, man. I thought you were 30. I thought you were 30. Mm -hmm. You look like you're 30. Yeah, no, I, I do look I do look young. Um, you know what though? The funny thing is when you say that, um, only two or three years ago, no, maybe four or five, before I had kids anyway. So no. About five years ago, I used to get told I looked like I was 16. <laughs> now when I go yeah, places now when I go places, I get told I'm look like I'm 30, 35. And I'm like, whoa. What happened? Right? Damn. I used to hate being like looking like I was 16 years old at times. Now I, I'm like, now I'm all of a sudden 30? I just jumped like what? 14 <laughs> years? I know. Yeah. You're the dad, Bob. Yeah, I guess, man. Um, you know, maybe they, <laughs> like, maybe they see me with my kids, but like, you know, if I go get beer or something like that, I don't get ID'd or anything. I used to get ID up until like three or four years ago, I used to get ID'd. You know what I mean? And it was okay. I understood. And they'd always be like, oh, I'm sorry. You know, once they see my date of birth, 1988, they're like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't. I'm like, no, no, no. It's okay. I understand. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, that's kind of another thing on me kind, kind of coming onto YouTube. I thought because, you know, I maybe I look young. People aren't going to take me seriously as a hobbyist. Obviously, that has nothing to do with it. But, um Clearly, it um, you know, seeing friends that are doing it and doing well with it and stuff like that too, and, and I was like, man, I like I've always wanted to sh showcase myself on something that I'm good at, and I never know knew what that may be because growing up, I was kind of good at a few things, and hockey was one of them, um, basketball was another, and then um, fish, animals in general. So I was like, how can I do this? And um, I just kind of got the courage one day to pop on if i if you were that if you literally two years ago if you were to say oh you should start a youtube channel or you if you sorry if you could say where, where i am now coming on live with like you know not, now you're a friend of mine but going online and just talking to random strangers in the comments and talking to people online um i would have told you you're crazy back then <laughs> I am. now look now look at me you know so and i met a lot of cool people along the way you know a lot of friends um uh people that you know friends that i would now call you know sisters or brothers or kind of even some of them maybe father figures um you know uh, mentors in the hobby mentors in terms of the content creation have really taken me under taking me under their wing as well so that always helps graduated in 1987 when did you graduate uh uh, high school there, uh, Alex? Uh, 2013. 2013. And how old are you now? 10. I'm 30. 30. And you just turned 30? Yeah, I just turned 30. Okay, I'm turning In 36 August. this year. Yeah. Nice. I got a seven-year-old son and a four-year-old daughter. Got any kids? No, thank God. No, thank God. You don't want kids. <laughs> no. No. No, you're like, no, I, not, I really don't now, want kids. Not now at least. Yeah, no, I don't blame you, dude. Um, they're they're a headache. Yeah, it would be good to have, have them. Have oh them. no, like yeah, like you know, teach their own. I got friends of mine that don't ever want to have kids, and and there's nothing wrong with that. Sometimes people look at them like, what do you mean you don't want kids? What do you mean? It's like so, like, you know, when we were told in, like, the 90s, like, when our parents brought us, like me, for example, like, you know, the dream was get a job uh, at a plant, work there for 30 years so you can have a pension and uh, buy a house. Okay, cool. No problem. That that was, like, the goal in life that knew that you made it. Like, you know, back in, like, the 90s and the 80s and the 70s and the 60s. It's just old school mentality, right? You know, and that worked. But nowadays, a lot of companies don't offer pensions. Maybe I don't want to work in a plant or a factory or this or that or whatever. Maybe I want to be an entrepreneur. Maybe I want to go in sales, which I'm in sales. Uh, maybe I want to be in sales. You know what I mean? And they, in sales, you don't get a pension. That's for damn sure. Um, and uh, maybe I don't want to own a home. I own a home. But like, you know, a lot of people nowadays don't want to own homes. You know, I don't blame them either. 
you know, like the, the, co- the costs of maintaining the house. Not only that, the prices of homes. I don't know. Where, where are you, Alex? Whereabouts are you in the U.S.? I'm in Florida. South Florida, to be exact. The houses are expensive down here. You're in, whereabouts in Florida? I'm in South Florida, uh, West Palm area. Oh, West you're West Palm. Palm. And, uh, Miami. Okay, so you're, you're, you're in Florida. So you're, you get good weather all year. So you're lucky. Um, Florida, yeah, is expensive. That's where all of us Canadians like to go in the winter. Um, as you know, um, you'll probably see a yeah, million on on <laughs> Yeah, you'll get you'll get the Ontario license plates and all that stuff over there because, well, we're not that far of a drive away, and uh, well, it's the warmest place closest to us. Um, so we kind of go there in the winter time. I love Florida. I got a lot of friends in Florida. Um, I want to go fishing in Florida catch some peacock bass out in the wild. I know they're invasive and all that other stuff. And it's part of the, it's partly caused by the aquarium hobby and, you know, and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, I do want to go out and catch them. Oscars, jaguar cichlids, peacock bass. You know what I mean? There's red tail cats in my pond over here. Dude. <laughs> why aren't you, do, do you ever go, do you, have, do you ever go fishing like and, and try to catch them or? Yeah. Technically, you're not supposed to fish there, but I do it anyway until the cops come. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, U.S. property taxes are in Florida where Alex and I live are insane. Yeah, property taxes here are crazy too, uh, Brian. Um, we have the highest inflation rate on real estate in the entire world over the last 10 years. Um, in 2018, not to be specific, but in 2018, I bought my house for roughly $300,000. Um, it is worth well... It's worth triple that now. So unless it fixes itself soon, you know, my kids will never be able to buy a home. So I hope, I hope it all crashes. <laughs> I ain't going anywhere. So I don't care. Let it crash. Let my house be worth $2. Yeah. I saw like four red tail cats in that pond over here. Wow. I want to catch one of them. Yeah, and man, that it. would be that would be cool. Yeah, go out there, catch one, and film it. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of good. There's a there, there's a there's definitely you know what. Here's here's my opinion on on Florida fish keeping as a whole. I think if you're a Florida fish keeper, there's a lot of great ones out there, and unfortunately, the great Florida fish keepers that are content creators, their channels never blow up like in terms of like millions of subs right it's very rare right but then the ones that aren't hobbyists they do it just for the money a lot of them right um they're the ones that blow up and tell you to release your fish back in the wild and they're a part of the problem and it's like it's like damn dude and like they had they had that whole white list that was coming out in florida like a couple years back and like i was worried about that happening because that would be detrimental to fish stores brick and mortar stores the hobby you know what i mean i was worried about that for florida i'm glad it um didn't get passed me too it would have sucked we would have lost a lot of cool fish for sure yeah yeah you would have and like and that's when a lot of the florida fish keepers like the big uh youtubers like you know i won't say names or anything like that but they were like oh well if that happens i'll just release it in the wild because i don't want it to die wow it's like okay and i i do get it though i do get their point you know it's my pet i'm not going to kill my pet i'd rather let it have a chance to live however it's not the answer you give dude okay you know, you're making a few bucks. You're good to go. You know, George ain't far away. It's about a five or six hour drive from where you are. Drive your little butt down to Georgia and sell it to somebody in Georgia. Right? So, you know. Or sell online, too. Or sell it online. Yeah, yeah. Ship it, you know. Shipping is kind of like, easy. I don't like shipping fish. I hate shipping fish. I hate having fish shipped to me. I get very stressed out. I used to do it when I worked at a fish store. I used to be the shipper. Mm. It's all right. Until someone says a fish comes in dead, then the plane's on you. Boom. 
Yeah, no. Yeah, no, I exactly. I think um most oh, of the by time the way, it's FedEx. Yeah, no, for sure. Like it, dude. Um what was I gonna say? Do you ever come down? Have you ever been to Canada? I was supposed to go, but then COVID happened. I wasn't able to make it, but I do want to go. Yeah, you should come down sometime. Got a lot of dope stores here. Um, come down in the summertime. Um, I will warn you, it gets very hot here in south southern Ontario. Um, it get, it gets hot, like hot. Like I'm Florida sure gets hot too. Florida gets hot too, but like we get hotter than Florida in the summertime. It's it like it's it's nuts, like it's it's hot. Yeah, so it's it like it's it like people are like, oh no, you live in Canada, it's cold. No, dude, like it gets hot here, like really hot. Um, you know, we have these, um, you know, temperatures fifty, like uh, they were they've cranked fifty degrees Celsius uh, last summer. You know what I mean? So, you know, as a fish keeper, you got to be careful of that. So. It's cool though. You guys have some beautiful fish like Asian arowanas. I'm yeah, we do. Guys. Yeah, we do, man. Um, you know, I had one. He he unfortunately jumped. Um, big big fella too, and uh, grew him out. Um, and uh, one day he just decided to take the plunge, even though I had my lids as secure as I possibly could. You know talking to the most experienced Asian arowana owners in the world and importers and breeders and farms. If they want to find a way out, they will. There's nothing that's going to stop them to get out. Well, there are a few things, but they'll, they'll probably die like tr trying to jump and hitting something if they wanted to truly get out and you, you're not going to let them out. So, um, but yeah, man, we have them. I'm going to have another one soon. Um, I, I've been really picky this past, uh, Damn, it's been uh, it's been over a year since he died. A year and two or three months now that I haven't had an Asian or one in my home aquarium, which is nuts because actually this tank right here is going to be just an Asian arowana aquarium with my rays. Um, at, my rays will probably get moved. To be honest, it might just be an Asian arowana aquarium. Maybe some, maybe a couple plecos or something like that, but. Um, or some, maybe some, you know, maybe a little tigriness or something. I don't know. Anyways, but um, this tank is going to be an Asian arowana aquarium. And then I'm, um, the goal is to build a 12 foot by four foot by four foot high um, aquarium in here as well. So it's going to be a monster tank. Nice. That'll be very cool. I love Asian arowanas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, Brian. Uh, Matt says uh, I don't. He keeps saying his name's Matt, but it goes says Brian. So I'm gonna call you. Matt, I'm gonna call you Matt. Um, correct me again in the chat if I'm wrong, Brian. Uh, Matt, sorry. Um, I have a shirt that says "Legalize Arowana" with a big red Asian arowana on it. I think Predatory Fins was selling something like that, right? Um, and with a big and it, yeah, they most have of my, my most of my Canadian friends have them down here. I've had two silver arowana, and that's about as close as i can get to the nice red asian that i want i had a red i had a chili red actually the certificate's still here there he is that's so cool you get one with every purchase every one you buy you get one of those correct oh cool yeah so when when you get them um, they obviously are microchipped and, uh, they're, and they're CITES certified. Um, so they have to have paperwork, of course, certificate microchipped. Um, yeah, it's, um, pretty cool, but they're also expensive depending. Well, you can get a low end Asian arowana here for 300 bucks. Um, but you can get a high-end Asian arowana. Um, well, they can go up. Like mine, I guess with his colors, his size, uh, I never tanned him. I don't believe in tanning. 
Um, well, I may do it at some point in my, in my hobby. Um, but as of right now, I, I can't see myself ever tanning. I just don't want to deal with the algae and the work. Um, mine probably was worth 15, 20 grand Canadian. Yeah. U S probably, I don't know. I got offered 50,000 U S for him. If I could get him across the border, I never did. I keep him here. He stays here. That'd be really difficult to do. Yeah. I told, uh, I told my wife once if I die, yeah, I um, if I die, uh, my arowana comes with me. Yeah, my Asian arowana <laughs> comes goes with to the me. Grave. Like, what do you mean? She goes, what do you mean? Like, like, you know, like you want me to find a home for him? Like you want me to give him to like, you know, Joey or something, ship him to Joey. I'm like, well, he probably, you, you no, know, I want him. He comes with me. If I die, he dies. <laughs> just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, oh, well, Garcia, mean, Birdo. What up, Birdo? Birdo's here. Yeah, he's actually like, he lives like 16 minutes from me. Yeah, I love Birdo. Um, he's a good dude, man. He's great. Uh, yeah, he's a great, great guy. guy. Yeah, Bertle's a great guy. Um, Bertle's a great guy. Um, no I've actually met all. So I've really started to take a push onto YouTube lives. If you if you haven't noticed, but prior to that, you'd never see me go live on YouTube. I very rarely joined somebody's live. It was extremely rare when I did. Um, it just you know it was and it wasn't for the sake of oh I don't want to do it. It was just I wasn't comfortable in doing it. I guess you could say. And. Um, yeah, no, I've recently started, you know, going on to a lot of people's lives, joining in, chopping it up. And I've had a lot of fun with it because I'm meeting a lot of people too, a lot more people because I primarily like in terms of like a daily active side, it was primarily over on Instagram. It was never on YouTube. Yeah, that that was me too. I used to do podcasts on like uh, blog talk radio and Instagram, but now I'm on YouTube. YouTube's a lot better. Yeah, Get YouTube is a lot better. Yeah, you know, yeah, if you can get a little a few bucks back from the hobby in terms of um, you know, posting what you're doing anyway, why not, right? Um, I, I mean I don't make my videos are a little different. I don't make videos for children. Um, I don't have heavily edits like Mr. B style corny edits in my videos. Um, it's raw, it's vloggy. Um to the point um it is what it is and uh yeah like i just you know i just want to you know i make sure i have a good camera and my lighting is good and all that other stuff but other than that like i really don't care like you're not going to see all this crazy stuff if i if i take longer than like an hour to edit a video or an hour and a half you know i don't want to do it so i don't think i really edit, edit my videos too much I just uh, film and upload. Yeah, no, for sure. 100%. <laughs> Gordon, you're going to be sleeping Sometimes. with the fishes. Yeah, Matt says, I agree. He's a great guy. Yeah, Berto's great. Um, yeah, you're kind of blunt on your videos. It's more like an informative newscast the way I look at it. You're like the opposite of Alex because he really likes to joke around. His personality sticks out. Your personality is more serious about the hobby that you're talking about at the moment. Yeah, yeah, man, like... I mean, I do joke around in some of my videos, um, and I do like to have fun. I'm definitely a joker outside of the YouTube world. Um, I love to make people laugh. I like to be the the clown. I guess you could say, you know, like I, I was the class clown in high school. It got me into a lot of trouble. Um, but now in terms of my videos and stuff like that, like, well, the last couple have been serious. But, yeah, it's just raw, raw and to the point. Just raw and to the point. Here's what I'm doing. Here's what's going on. You know, it is what it is. That's cool. It's funny that uh, Matt mentioned that. I actually had to, to change my uh, presentation because a lot of people said that the way I was presenting was kind of boring. So I tried to introduce jokes to it. Now they like it. Yeah, man. I, look, the one thing I can say like that I've learned too, like Alex, you've been doing this for a long time, my friend. Um, you know, in the, in the two, like, I don't know if it's the two years, I think if two years I've been 
active, I guess you could say, on my channel. Um, yeah, just just hit two years. Crazy, wow. Um, dude, be yourself. Have fun. Enjoy it. I love it. Like I, I love the hobby. I love everything about the hobby. I like watching people's videos. Yeah. You know, like if I can, if literally dude, like I'm sitting you with you right now, having a conversation, we're talking fish, nonsense, whatever the case may be. Um, and I enjoy these conversations. You know what I mean? I like, I, I have a lot of fun. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's always a blast talking with you. Oh, hold on here. So Gordon, next Thursday, post a bunch of videos in our group. Uh, we love having fish tubers uh, in our group. I think at 100% is a win-win thing because it introduces more people to our hobby. Uh, anybody who thinks that you're boring can kiss my ass with a leprechaun butt. Brian said, he's talking about you. <laughs> or uh, Matt, sorry. <laughs> leprechaun. Yeah, no, dude, like, yeah, man, like, I watched a couple of your videos, too. I watched your species profiles on, like, some some fish and stuff like that. I liked your videos, man. I thought they were awesome. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah, man. Yeah, dude. Um, I actually was trying to do the I, best that I can. I set a calendar reminder for your uh, live yesterday, and then uh, you ended up not coming on. I saw it on your community I post know. that you couldn't make it. Sorry about that. No, it's all good, man. Hey, life gets in the way, yeah. dude. I'm busy baking yeah, no life gets I in the way. I can make dude. it. And like, I know. Yeah, no life. Life gets in the way, man. I don't apologize for anything, dude. Listen, you're going out of your way to make content to please people that they and in, in that they'll enjoy it, or maybe even find it informative or whatever. You're creating, uh, uh, you know, I guess you could say valuable distractions for people, right? And that's time out of your day in order to do that. You know, some of these videos, as we all know, can take hours to create, uh, can take prep, it can take planning, it can take emailing back and forth with people, trying to get them on to the show and finding out a time that works and all this other stuff too, man. Like, so like whatever you're doing, dude, like, you know, I think, you know, I got, I, I love giving credit when credit is due and, and I give my hat, I take my hat off to any creator that's been doing this thing for 10 plus years or two plus years or three plus years. Cause like, if you've been doing it for like four or five years or more and you've stuck through it and you've remained relatively consistent, um, I know for a fact you've went through the ups, you've went through the downs, you've kind of seen a little bit of it all. You probably thought about quitting at times um, and you kind of just stuck around. And uh, you push through it. Like, I tell you, every time I lose, like, a big loved fish of mine, like, you know, it's been a long time since I lost a fish. Last time I lost a fish was my Asian arowana. Um, but, you know, when I, when you lose fish, like, that's, like, when I'm, like, you know, I'm, I'm done with this hobby. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. You know, I get all agitated and angry and it's my fault. And, you know, the typical, the usual suspects on what happens. But. We just find a way to persevere. That's true. I always persevere. <laughs> yeah, you, you you know, you always persevere, you know? So it's like, man, like, dude, like I give my hat off to any anybody who's, A, been in this hobby for a long time too. Because even whether you're on a camera or off a camera, you know, See the difference between being on a camera. Here's here's like the the part where I can see a lot of that why a lot of fish tubers fall off um, and burn out and kind of crash and burn is because well we're dealing with animals. So anytime you deal with animals, animals are a very sensitive subject to a lot of people out there in the world, and as they should be. But when you have animals and you get animals, you take care of them, you you educate on them, and you provide valuable content for people you also have to explain what happens to them if they get when they get sick and they or if on god forbid they do pass away because people are going to wonder dude you know they they watch you know um i see it all the time on like you know i've seen it all i used to see it all the time on like when i used to watch a lot of the other bigger youtubers out there hey what happened to this fish what happened to that fish and they kind of just ignore that comment but respond to every other comment you know, or or they delete the comment. Yeah, I'm guilty like of that, that too. Sometimes. Yeah, no, dude, man. 
you know, like, dude, like I've, I've lost fish in the past and, uh, you know, like, and, uh, you know, I wasn't on YouTube, but, but I've lost fish, dude. Like, and that's, I think that's why it's important to show that like you lose fish. It's okay, dude. It's okay that you lose fish. Don't worry. No one's going to think you're a bad fish keeper, man. No one's going to think, oh my God, it's your fault, blah, 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 this and that. And if they're going to think that they're clearly uneducated and they don't know the why behind the what. You know, and, and and then at that point, you can properly educate them in a respectful manner. Um, and if not, they don't want to listen in a respectful manner. You can polite, in, in, impolitely let them know too. Um, but at the at the end of the day, man, it, it it's it's brutal, dude. Like you got to be able to explain everything, and that's when I can see a lot of fish keepers you know, burning out because they, they, they either don't want to explain what happened or they're upset at just what happened. And they kind of just don't want to talk about it. And I don't blame them. You know what I mean? Like when I made the video of my Asian marijuana dying, that was a tough video. Like, you know, I cry and I cry in the video. Um, you see tears in my eyes is from a grown man, you know, taught as a child to never show emotion, um, you know, which is the wrong thing to do. Um, but, um, you can see the hurt and, and, and I thought like, you know, I'll make this video when I'm ready to make this video and explain it. But I thought, you know, I needed to make this. Then I realized quickly, like that day after talking with uh, a mentor of mine, I won't say his name, big, big fish tuber. Um, it, I was encouraged to do the video because it will help me as well. Um, it'll help me heal on my own and, and um, it'll just help me move move forward. Um, and I, so I did it, and it worked. I moved forward. It hurt. It stung, bro, for like two or three weeks, for sure. Uh, maybe even a month. But, you know, I got through it. You know, you, you get through it. So hats off to all the fish tubers and the content creators or anybody that deals with animals on a public spotlight. And they're getting, and you're literally opening yourself up to being judged on a daily basis, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Somebody can comment. Somebody can create a Reddit post. Somebody can criticize you. Someone can say, Hey, did you see that Gordon Finkel guy from Aquarium Talk TV and the way he treats his fish? Uh, I don't like it. The tank's too big. You know, I don't know. I'm just thinking like, you know, just something like, you know, and so, you know, people go tanks too small. Well, the tanks too big, bro. <laughs> you know, so it, it, um, I, you know, hats off to all of us, man, that, that do this. And anybody that even takes a photo of their fish and puts it in a Facebook group, you know, takes a lot of balls to do that and to be able to continue with doing it. So hats off to you, man, for doing it for how long as you have. Cause I, I scrolled back, dude. I saw your content. I scrolled back. I saw a lot of your content. I saw how long you've been doing this, man. Thank you. I appreciate that. I always tell you, I enjoy your live streams. You're one of my favorite live streams that I get to watch. Yeah. I don't know how often I'll do them. Um, I have a members only um, thing I am starting. I have an idea with that. I'm probably going to have guests on through the members only side of things, just because in terms of a live side of things, um, in the with the guests that i'm going to be having on you never know what's going to be said um on a public scale so at least on a members only i can then edit it and then on the public side you get the edited version but on the members only side you get like the raw uncut you get version. to put yourself on the only you get to yeah well and i still am on myself on on the like whatever no, but you, I know. I, I have a trucker mouth. My <laughs> mouth is a, I have a trucker mouth. So try constantly going like, and then biting my tongue is, 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 is always been a battle for me. So, you know, um, so there'll be a lot of stuff like that on there. Obviously a little bit, a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Um, you know, just daily, daily videos almost pretty much, man. Like even if they're a minute, minute and a half, there's going to be other stuff, you know, but I'm, I'm thinking of stuff I want to do with it. I, I, I don't know, like, and then like, if I'm going to do that, I got to keep up with it and stuff like that. So I, I am weighing it out. Like if I do it, I just want to be fully committed to doing it um, because I don't want people to give me a few bucks a month for, for nothing. You know what I mean? Although I could use it. This is expensive. <laughs> 
You're definitely right about that. I'm going to subscribe to you. I'll become a member for sure. Oh, Gordon, I just remembered where I know you from. It was like maybe two years ago, maybe three. You got to forgive me. My brain's really messed up from the stroke. But you did a baby piranha video that I really liked. So I shared it in my group. I'm 99.9% .9 positive it was you. Um, I have Tourette's after my stroke, so you never know what I'm going to say. It's like a truck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, man. I, I used to do a lot of piranha videos when I had my piranhas. Um, I really miss my piranhas, to be honest. I'm, I'm trying to find a way, actually, right now on how I can get piranhas back into the fish room with the space that I have. Um, cause knowing, well, they're, they're red belt. I want red bellies. So I want to pack a red bellies again. And you know, they get our, the size of, I don't know. It's the easiest way to compare it to like a shoe, you know? So they get pretty big. So, you know, eventually, so, you know, I just want to make sure I can house them for the, the long haul. That's the other thing about too, like it's I've limited space. What's that? I've had Karee base before. They're pretty cool too. They're like red bellies. Kribas? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, for sure. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah Salmas. You know, they're all Sarah Salmas, right? I think no, that's how you say it. They're pygocentris. Sarah, no, isn't it uh, pygocentris? No, but what's the, la the, the Latin it's name for the, it? Oh, you mean like the, the group? Yeah, they're all Sarah Salmas. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's right. Salmon yeah. there. See, I, I can't I cannot pronounce the Latin words at all. Um no, you're good. Don't worry about it. Yeah, that but like um, yeah, no, for sure. No, like, dude, and like I don't even like me personally, I'm like, I don't even care. <laughs> like I red belly piranha, <laughs> caribe, you know, brandy, you know, they're like all these scary. other different ones, Manueli. Um, but yeah, yeah, so I'd like to have uh piranhas back in my fish room at some point. Can you have piranhas in Florida? Me too. No. Well, technically you can't, but yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just don't show them. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, dude, I used to, I'll be honest, dude. I had a channa. I had a snakehead. You never knew. I never saw. I never showed him. You know, no one ever knew. You'll never know when. But I assure you, you shouldn't have had him. <laughs> You know, hey, I had a black wolfish too. Well, I had a black wolfish. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah. You know, so like, you just you, you never. He was my personal enjoyment. You know, it was it was it was great. I had a um yellow santorum, Chanamaru. Nice. Um, it's the oh, species. Beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, they call. It, they're also called the emperor snakehead. Um, beautiful fish. Nice. Um. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. Uh, you got to groom them so they fl they call it flowering. Um, yeah, awesome, awesome, awesome fish. Um, it's really an art grooming a snakehead. Um, I tried. I did. I did pretty well with it. I brought a lot of the yellows. I brought out the flowering, all that stuff on them, and all that stuff. And, but it's a lot of a lot of stuff, man. They they need to have filtration, but not a lot of surface agitation. Um, they don't necessarily need the cleanest water, which is really hard to believe. So even though you know that you're still going to give them the cleanest water, right? So it's like you're sacrificing there. No, dude, like you're, I'm giving you the cleanest water I can. Um, tannins, um, a lot of tannins in the aquarium, sand bottom. Um, yeah, dude, just, you know, because they're air, they're air gulpers, right? So... Yeah, but but you know it, it's 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 awesome having fish that you can keep for yourself. Like I I have a I have a fish um, that I've never showed on my channel. I've mentioned him, but I've never showed him. He's not a he's not um he's elite. He's I'm able to keep him. It's just um I just never show him just because simply he just hides. <laughs> so the moment I get over there, he's gone. <laughs> so, so it's like, dude, like I can't get you. Like right now, he's out. You know, but if I like get up and I go stand up and get, if I get close to the tank, he's gone. Like he just disappears. And like sometimes, like there's points where I like he blends into the black, the back black round. He'll darken himself up of stress, um, and he'll just blend in. And I'm like, where the hell did he go? Like, is he gone? You know. But I've checked around the tank one day, thinking he jumped out. 
Uh, he's a peacock bass. Oh, cool. Little pea. Little one. Little spider killberry. Yeah. I love peacock bass. Hey, he's a 24 nice. carat spider killberry. So he's more of a designer rare type of uh, peacock bass. But, you know, not overly rare, but definitely a rare peacock bass. And, uh, you know, so he'll be cool once he grows out. If I decide to swing through and keep him, because I only got the one. I got two. Um, one came to me in bad shape. Um, Try to bring him back, but he was he was a little gone. And then um, the other one um, is thriving. It's just I don't know if I want to wait the time to to grow him out anymore and all that other stuff. But I got a buddy of mine that'll take him. He's about five inches now. So I got him. They were small, dude. Maybe an nice. inch. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So I have a I have a nice diamond ring. Yeah, Raphael cats. Oh, dude, they're the worst, man. You'll never see them. Yeah. You'll never see a Raphael. They're <laughs> terrible, dude. Yeah, wild mines. Yeah. Yeah, dude. 100%. You'd see a lot of them out there. Um, Florida waters are infested with beautiful fish. Um, unfortunately, invasive fish. But beautiful fish. You know, so it's 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 nuts to see uh it's nuts to uh to see that in the, your waterways and sad at the same time, especially the pleco problem. Um I saw some plecos uh, feasting on a manatee. There's a viral video on Instagram. And um yeah, that was sad to see that. Yeah, it's but, terrible. Yeah. They're yeah. thriving down here really bad. Well they are, they're they're impossible to kill. Right, they have no. Um, <laughs> I know. In the aquarium hobby, have, you can't kill them. In the aquarium hobby, you can't kill them. You can have them in the worst water in the world. Those ba those bastards will live. You could have them in eight parts per million ammonia, and those guys will just thrive. <laughs> yeah, they're the worst, you know. So, yeah, they. They they suck, man. Like I mean, I I have nothing against plecos. I just I have everything against the common pleco, and I don't think it should be in the hobby and, as a whole. And you know, I agree. 100% with they you. should have never. They should have never been brought here, dude. Um, they're just too damn big for ninety nine point nine percent of Aquarius out there. Um, they produce too much. They produce a ton of waste. Um, they're not. They're not, they're not, they, they're just, they shouldn't be in the hobby, in my opinion. We can say that about Arapaima. I agree. We could say that about a lot, a lot of different fish out there, man. You know what I mean? Like I had an Arapaima, but they, I didn't, I never had the Arapaima. It was a deal between myself and somebody that had a, uh, essentially it was roughly 26,000 gallon concrete pond. He lives about an hour and a half away from me. Could never get an Arapaima. Always wanted one. Old guy. Older guy. Um, ho old school hobbyist. Been in the hobby for like 40 years. He The the pond is in his workshop. Lives in the country. Um, and uh, didn't have... Always wanted to find a big Arapaima. But in, you know, as we all know, Arapaima are impossible to ship at that size. Not only that, if you can ship them, it's extremely risky. And the likelihood of death due to stress um, is is basically imminent. Um, so I ended up finding him one um, and got it, uh, went and got it from Montreal. Brought it back and uh, shot a video. And the deal was, hey, I'll go get it. You pay for the fish. Um I'll go get it from Montreal for you. Cause I know you don't want it shipped and you can't make it to Montreal and you can't have it grown out. I'll grow it out for you and sit for six months and then you can have it deal. No problem. Went the next day or two days later and picked up the fish and I had him on my channel for five months. Yeah. His name's tiny, tiny, the Arapaima. <laughs> Except he's not tiny for long. Yeah, no, that's that was that was the joke about it, right? Yeah, I think it was you about uh, two or three years ago. <laughs> two or three years ago, they found an 
time on the Florida waters. It was in Miami, I think. Oh, dude. Yeah, that's brutal, dude. Um, yeah, like they shouldn't be in the hobby either. However, you know, there are some people that have <laughs> the means to be able to house them. However, it's very rare. And if you want an Arapaima, you should be put on an order. You can create an order and then and then you can just order it. Rather than fish stores selling them for, you know, 200 bucks a pop um, at three or four inches. I like the, and even uh, at three. The African Arowana is much better than the Arapaima. You think so? Yeah, they look alike and they stay smaller. I think they're just like a filter feeding fish. They are, but they can also eat other stuff too. I had one that took tilapia. Oh, really, eh? Yeah, I think they look cool. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, I think they look cool. But they're mean. They're mean as hell. Yeah, all arowana can be mean, man. Trust me. My, my uh, Asian arowana, the, so the for Asian arowana, the reds are typically the most aggressive. They're known to be the most aggressive. They're known to be a lot of times not being able to have other fish with them. Um, they can be extremely territorial. Mine was, was kind of like that. I mean, he had an attitude, but anytime I stuck my hand in the tank, he would go for it and like bite hard. He got me once right here. Um, when I had my arm reaching in the tank, trying to grab a stingray barb that had fell fallen, I was leaning down in the water and trying to grab it. And he bit me right here on my arm. And when I tell you, he grabbed and tugged and pulled wow. and, uh, the uh, yeah, I had my blood in the tank. I had to try to do a water change. Yeah. It was, it was, yeah, it was brutal, man. I was like, ow, 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 you know, mother, bop, 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 you know? And then, um, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, where did you find the Arapaima yeah, Montreal? It was a private Arapaima seller. But it was from Jumper. Oh, really? Yeah, it was a, a three-foot silver jumping out. It hit me right in the shoulder. <laughs> oh, no. Yeah, that's brutal. Yeah, that was when I was working at a fish store. Working at a fish store, and a guy wanted to buy a three-foot arowana, so I had to catch him. Oh, damn, dude. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah, Dude, I love your. I, yeah, I like your. Um, I like your backgrounds and stuff. Like you got your name in the back. You got Happy Easter. It looks really professional. Yeah, that's that's see, They could do one for you if you want. Yeah, no, man. Sure, dude. Like, I yeah, like to... I. Yeah, just let me know what you want. I'll create you one or two or three. Cool, dude. Yeah, no, for sure, man. Like, um. Yeah, man. Like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I'm going to go live again soon. I just don't kind of don't know when. But, um, but yeah, man. Like, um, I'm I'm down, dude. If it, if yeah, like if if it if it doesn't take much of your time or anything like that, I'd love no, to compensate you for it too. It doesn't, it doesn't take long at all. Just let me know when you go live next, and I'll create one for you. Okay, man. For sure. Um, they call Gordon. Have you ever seen a water cow goby? I had to get my thumb reattached. Water cow well, I literally took out my thumb. And the yarn told him. Oh, geez. No, I have not. Damn. Ouch. That's brutal. Damn, Matt. That sucks, dude. Damn. Ouch. Yeah, that is bad. Well, listen, Alex, um, I've came on. Uh, I just wanted to pop on, chop it up with you for an hour, dude. Um, talk some fish, talk some nonsense. I'm going to be tuned into your stream for the rest of your stream um, in the in the chat. So I'll be able to chop it up with everybody in the chat. Seems like primarily uh, everyone's chopping it up over on the Facebook side of things. What's your what's the Facebook uh, your Facebook page that you're broadcasting on? I'm actually on in the group right now, uh, querying my session. Oh, you're in the group? Yeah. Okay, hold on. Oh, wait, no, I got you live. There you go. Okay. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> there you go. So now, oh, now I can see like photos and stuff. Perfect, man. Yeah, you yeah. got everything now. There we go. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So I'll tune in on the Facebook side of things. There's a, there I am right there. Hey everyone. Um, but, um, yeah, man. Uh, thank you for having me on Alex. Uh, you're a great well, dude, man. Pleasure. I want to do some time, more man. lives with you again. I definitely want to do some anytime. more lives with you again, man. Absolutely. I would love to have you on again. You're a blast. Absolutely. And you man. give me a check too. With what? <laughs> I don't have to talk too much. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I fuck. I I can't stop talking. So go ahead, man. Did you did you got you guys got to tell me to shut up? No, you're good. I think you're good. Awesome, man. Okay, well, thank you for having I me on. I appreciate it. Alex. Thank you so much. Yeah, welcome, no problem. Um, happy Easter, man. I wish you nothing but the best, brother. And uh, I'll talk to you thank soon. You. And I'll be in the I'll be in the chat. So. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Happy Easter. Happy Easter to you as well and to your family. You too. Perfect. That was awesome. I really enjoyed that. It's not too often where I get to have an awesome guest like that. So that was incredible. All right. So I, I think before he hopped on, we talked about the true Tiger Moray eel. So I'm just going to briefly play a video of the Tiger Moray eel. And we'll continue whatever's left that I had of the show. Um, so let me play that video really quick. Very, very cool. So one day I would love to get a Tiger Moray eel, but not in my big tank, maybe in another tank. So very, very cool. All right, so before I wrap things up, I would like to remind all the fish keepers that are watching that this Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern, I'm going to be introducing a new series to my channel called Find Your Oasis. Um, it might also go live on my Instagram. I haven't decided yet. The last time I went live on Instagram, I was told you can't you can't go live longer than an hour, so I don't know how that would work. I probably would have to split it up, but maybe it'll be on Instagram, maybe not. I'm not sure yet. But anyways, here is the new series that I am doing starting this Tuesday. Aqua Alex Cardinali and Fish Guy Tom McGuire are proud to announce a new fish keeping series coming to YouTube channel The Real Alex Cardinali. The name of this fish keeping show is Find Your Oasis. It will be hosted by Aqua Alex Cardinali and Oasis Aquatics owner Fish Guy Tom McGuire. This will be a fish keeping live stream with no scripts and no nonsense. Any and everything fish will be discussed and Tom will also discuss current happenings at Oasis Aquatics. Find Your Oasis airs each and every month on YouTube channel The Real Alex Cardinali. Don't miss the chance to see two awesome fish keeping friends chat fish and have fun. The debut of Find Your Oasis is live this Tuesday, April 2, 2024, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Let's kick off April in style fish keepers. What will Aqua Alex and Fish Guy Tom have to discuss on the debut episode? Oasis Aquatics celebrates its first year on April 1st. Will that be up for discussion on the debut of Find Your Oasis? Who knows? Be sure to tune in and have some fun. Live Tuesday, April 2nd, 2024, at 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific on YouTube channel The Real Alex Cardinali. All right, so that'll be taking place this Tuesday. It's actually my next live stream, I believe. I'll be doing that this Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern. So I think I pretty much covered everything um, that I wanted to mention on tonight's show. So I would like to thank everyone that participated in the chat. Thank you to my good friend, Matt, for bringing some fire with those awesome questions tonight. And I also want to thank my friend Gordon for showing up tonight and being a legendary guest tonight. He was awesome. I really had a blast, Gordon. Thank you so much for that. That made my Easter so much better. Thank you so much, Gordon. I really appreciated that. So everyone, if you enjoyed the video, please smash that like button on YouTube and feel free to share it on social media. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you all back on Tuesday at 9 p.m. Good night, everybody.
This weekend is WrestleMania 40 weekend. Therefore, there will be no Saturday Live with Alex Cardinale this week. However, the show must go on. There will be a Mania Friday Live with Alex Cardinale celebrating WrestleMania 40 and it airs live this Friday April 5, 2024 at a special start time of 6 p.m. Eastern 3 p.m. Pacific. There will be appearances by Aqua Alex Cardinale, Chef Alex, WWE fan Alex Cardinale, and Sergeant Slaughter. Sergeant Slaughter will have a triple set of facts. He will have facts on Walt Disney World, McDonald's, and since Sergeant loves the WWE he'll have facts on its biggest event of the year WrestleMania. WWE fan Alex Cardinale will preview the WrestleMania 40 match card and discuss the best moments of WWE Hall of Fame inductee's career Paul Heyman. Oasis Aquatics featured Fish is the Blue Moba Frontosa Cichlid. Aquascape Online featured Fish is the Violet Line Piranha. Aqua Alex's featured Fish is the Jerwense Catfish. The Animal of the Week is the Stinky Skunk. Learn about the skunk. Plus, how did the New York Yankees do in their first few weeks of the 2024 regular season? Who will be on Karens of the Week? All that and more. Live Friday April 5, 2024 at 6 p.m. Eastern 3 p.m. Pacific on YouTube channel The Real Alex Cardinale. Thank you very much for watching this live stream of The Real Alex Cardinale YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed the show. I want to thank you all for your patronage for the last 10 years. It's going to be incredible riding into the future with more awesome live streams and videos. Aqua Alex Cardinale, Chef Alex Cardinale, WWE fan Alex Cardinale, Detective Alex Cardinale, and The Real Alex Cardinale would like to thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this live stream, please smash that like button. If you are new to my YouTube channel please hit that subscribe button and become a legendary viewer and a legendary Cardinale. Check out the real Alex Cardinale on social media. Facebook Alex Cardinale, American Alex. Instagram Instagram.cot forward slash Alex Cardinale 93. Fish Keepers please join our amazing Facebook fish keeping group Aquarium Obsession. Check out and support Oasis Aquatics our amazing supporter since July of 2023. www.oasisaquaticsnj.com Follow Oasis Aquatics on Facebook and Instagram. Have a good night and thanks for watching. Stay legendary.